Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Is the best government really the one that governs the least? Can we ever have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution? If the Constitution was written to keep the government off the people's backs, why is the government all over us? Tonight, whatever happened to freedom? Understanding where we go from here should start with understanding how we got here. We are the free and independent people of the United States of America. We are free because those who preceded us fought a war against a person who was then the world's grandest king and who presided over what was then the world's grandest empire. The Founding Fathers risked, as they like to tell us, their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honors for the freedom and independence they won and we have inherited. But they were not saints. And initially, their cause was not popular. From the records available today, the people who measure historical trends have concluded that in 1776, only about one-third of Americans supported the revolution. About one-third of Americans opposed it. And about one-third of them didn't care. When I first looked at these numbers, I thought, in 1776, this was the grandest fight for the greatest amount of freedom for the most people at any point in history. So who could possibly oppose it? And who in their right mind could not care? Fast forward to today and ask, who could possibly support a government that regulates everything from the strength of the water pressure in your shower to the size of the toilet bowl in your home to the thickness of the leather in your shoes? Who could want a government that punishes people for speech, that lets its own agents write their own search warrants, that fights wars just to keep the military industrial complex busy, that debases all you own by printing worthless money and putting it into the stream of commerce, that gives away more than half the tax dollars it collects and that despite express provisions in the Constitution to the contrary, permits the president to lock up whoever he wants and to throw away the key. Perhaps the colonists who didn't care if they freely chose their government or were cared for by a benevolent tyrant had an odd way of knowing what was coming. Perhaps those who opposed the revolution were afraid to take on the king, to challenge authority and to risk their comfortable lives for the unknown. Well, we all know what happened. A relatively small part of the population pushed the culture and society toward freedom. And the freedoms that they chose were pure. I mean, after we won the revolution and wrote the Constitution, the new government and the political class assured all Americans that they could think as they wished and say what they thought and publish what they said, that they could associate or not associate with anyone. They could worship as they chose or choose not to worship. They could defend themselves with guns even against tyrants. That troops would never enter their homes, that only neutral judges would issue search warrants, and that the government could not take their lives, their freedom, or their property without a trial at which their fault would be proven in front of a neutral jury. All this was guaranteed to the first generation of Americans and to their posterity. That would be us because much of it had been denied, denied them by the king and the parliament, and because Americans came to believe, even the one-third that were afraid and the one-third that didn't care, that these rights are ours by virtue of our humanity. Whether you believe that we are the highest order of natural selection, or whether you believe, as I do, that we were created by God in his image and likeness, you know in your heart that these natural yearnings, as St. Thomas Aquinas and Thomas Jefferson called them, are our natural rights, are a part of our humanity, and cannot long be denied us. And yet, they have been denied. The same founding fathers who wrote that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech, in fact, enacted the Alien and Sedition Acts, which punished speech that was critical of them, critical of the government. This happened because people were afraid to challenge the tyranny of the majority. America, the greatest losses to our freedom have come not from someone attacking us, but from the government ignoring the Constitution and the majority letting them get away with it. The worst amendments to the Constitution were not those ratified by the states, but rather were amendments by consensus, where all three branches of government agreed to look the other way. When good people do nothing, bad things happen. So what shall we do? We should challenge authority, no matter who is in charge. We should challenge the majority whenever it curtails anybody's freedom. We should side with freedom, no matter what the government says. We should vote out of office those who push the government outside the Constitution, no matter what earmarks they just brought home. 
And we should make the government afraid of us. Afraid of us. Because as Jefferson reminded us, when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there is liberty. From New York, defending freedom. Everybody's freedom whenever I can. So long, America. Thank you.